sense then that Bolton will be testified, do you have it, uh, will be subpoenaed, I should say. Do you have any timeline as to when? I'd support uh, doing that, uh, and the reason why is not only because of what he knows about uh, Ukraine. Uh, certainly the Senate should have called him uh, for that before deliberating today. Uh, but what we know about this manuscript is Bolton apparently saw other corrupt schemes the president was running with other foreign leaders. And when I look at what happened with Ukraine, let's compare this to a 10-story building. We were on one floor of that building. We turn on the lights and we see rats everywhere, a corrupt scheme going on. I imagine if you go to the Russia floor, the Turkey floor, the Saudi floor, you're going to find the same stuff going on. And we have a duty to protect this country's national security and, in, and election integrity. And so the time frame, plenty? I don't know on that, but uh, okay. I, I would support it. There are plenty of people who would look at that and say that's a good thing, right, they, that the House would subpoena John Bolton. There are also, I imagine, people who would say, boy, that is too little too late, given that the Senate trial is already wrapped up, Bolton was not called to testify, and one of the reasons was because critics said you in the House never actually made this move. Is this too little too late? Yeah. Well, John Bolton was not willing to come to the House uh, when we had the impeachment inquiry going on. And I would say we well, shouldn't just do this because we... Well, he, he said he would challenge the subpoena if we sent him a subpoena, and we were trying to move swiftly so that we could protect the upcoming election. Uh, but, Hallie, I would say uh, that we're not going to bring him in because we want a sneak peek at his book. We're going to bring him in because we know when you check Donald Trump, you actually stop his corruption. And the example I'll give you is until the whistleblower came forward and we launched our investigation into Ukraine, Ukraine was not getting the aid. Only once we did that did they get the aid. Had we not done that, Ukraine would still not be getting the aid today. Ukrainians would be dying and a bogus investigation into Joe Biden would be underway. So who knows what else we're going to have to stop, check and prevent Donald Trump from doing, but we're up for doing it. Congressman, I want to ask you about the State of the Union, but just a quick housekeeping note here. Do you think the subpoena would come from judiciary? Do you think it would come from intel? What's your sense right now? You know, I'll leave it to Speaker Pelosi and the two chairmen on those committees. I think they worked quite well together during the impeachment inquiry, and I expect the same going forward. Okay. Um, would you, if you were Nancy Pelosi sitting behind President Trump last night, would you have ripped up the speech also? Uh, I don't think I would have had the same restraint uh, that she did. Uh, so I, I think, you think it was restraint? Uh, she, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think she was implying that, uh, thank God, there weren't matches around, uh, considering how he talked about, uh, you know, people... Uh, with pre-existing conditions, just lying about the protections he's not affording to them. Uh, how he talked about protecting the Second Amendment instead of our kids. Fred Guttenberg is back on Capitol Hill today. He stormed out. Uh, God bless Fred for doing that. He lost his daughter, Jamie, at Parkland. This, the president, I, I thought it was an insulting speech in many ways uh, and didn't offer many opportunities for us to work together on infrastructure, health care, and priorities of the American people. Is that door totally shut now, Congressman? I was talking with Senator Mike Braun on the other side no. of the aisle earlier in the show, and it just seems like how, when you have a speaker and a president who haven't spoken in months, after the bitter, frankly, very tense partisanship on display last night, how do you get anything done legislatively in the next yeah. 10 months? Look, I feel very strongly that we have the most corrupt person ever serving in the Oval Office, but I also have a duty to work for my constituents. And when I worked with the president uh, to make the U.S. The US Mexico Canada trade deal better that we did on the House side, we put aside the the disagreements with him. We passed that. He signed it into law. We could do the same on infrastructure. We could do the same on health care, same on prescription drugs and background checks. So if he wants to extend those offers, he's going to have a, a working party. I'm not trying to put out a double standard here, but I do have, I want to ask, listen, Michelle Obama very famously said, when they go low, we go high, right? Is that no longer the sort of standard operating thinking for, 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 for you, for Democrats? No, I, I still subscribe to that. And I, I you know, I admire Michelle Obama for, you know, setting that standard. And, we'll, you know, we went high when we worked with him on the U.S.-Mexico trade agreement rather than just saying he's a corrupt president, we can't do anything with him. This was going to benefit workers. They are more important than an insignificant corrupt president. Okay. Uh, before I let you go very quickly, on uh, the vote that is going to happen today over on the Senate yeah. side, I have heard from my sources covering the White House that they are hoping for, looking for a, what they call a bipartisan acquittal, meaning a Democrat or two could cross party lines and vote with Republicans, essentially. Is it your understanding, based on your conversations behind the scenes, that that could happen? Uh, I don't know how it's going to happen. Uh, I wish this was more of an impartial process where senators did approach it just looking at the evidence. Uh, but again, regardless what happens, it will not be uh, an acquittal. It will always have an asterisk around it because that trial had no witnesses. Congressman Eric Swalwell, I appreciate you joining us, uh, especially with that course, developing thanks, news right at the top of this segment. Thanks. Coming up next, presidential historian Doris Kearns Goodwin putting all of this in context. For